Hi, welcome back. I have a little catching up to do. I'm a little bit behind. Uh, today we're going to be reading for April 28th. We're going to be reading Judges 6, 25 through 7, 25. Luke 18, 18 through 43. Psalm 74, 4 through 11. Revelation 15 and Psalm 91. I'm going to try to read through because I have a few days to get through. And I'm going to try to catch up. Um, but if the Lord stops me from barreling through and I need to say something or whatever, he'll give me the energy and stamina, stamina and so on to, to get through. But, um, thank you for joining me. Today's reading is April 28th, 2022. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today with humble hearts and humble minds. We ask that you go before us and prepare this time that we have with you. Holy Spirit, we invite you in. Do what only you can do. We love you, Lord. Thank you for your son who died on the cross for our sins. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for this opportunity to have time with you and to learn more about you. We desire to have a closer relationship with you and to be more like you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. April 28th. 2022. Um, I'm not going to go over our normal top three priorities today because it's already done and gone. Um, but just quickly, top. what are your top three priorities today? What's on your schedule to-do list today? What do you want to remember from today, April 28th, 2022? What are your reflections on our reading today? And then keep up with your water drinking, your sleeping and rest, um, exercise and movement, your healthy eating, God's peace and obedience to Christ. When Jesus heard this, he said to the leader of the people, there is still one thing you need to do. Sell everything you have, give the money to the poor people, then you will have riches in heaven. Come and follow me. Luke eighteen twenty two. What do you own that keeps you from God? Nothing on earth is more worthy than heavenly treasure, yet earthly goods draw our hearts. We need to ask ourselves what earthly possessions could be better than our Lord? What could be worth giving up one moment with him? Amen. Judges 6, 25 through 7, 25. which completes chapter 7. Judges 6, 25. That same night the Lord said to him, Take the second bull from your father's herd, the one seven years old. Tear down your father's altar to Baal and cut down the... Asherah pole beside it. Then build a proper kind of altar to the Lord, your God, on, t on the top of this height. Using the wood of the Asherah pole that you cut down, 
offer the second bull as a burnt offering. So Gideon took 10 of his servants and did as the Lord told him. But because he was afraid of his family and the men of the town, he did it at night rather than in the daytime. In the morning, when the men of the town got up, there was ball, there was Baal's altar d- demolished with the Asherah pole beside it cut down and the second bull sacrificed on the newly built altar. They asked each other, who did this? When they carefully investigated, they were told Gideon, son of Joash, did it. The men of the town demanded of Joash, bring out your son. He must die because he has broken down Baal's altar and cut down the Asherah pole beside it. But Joash replied to the hostile crowd around him, are you going to plead Baal's Baal's cause? Are you trying to save him? Whoever fights for him shall be put to death by morning. If Baal really is a god, he can defend himself when someone breaks down his altar. So that day they called Gideon Jurub Baal, saying, let Baal contend with him because he broke down Baal's altar. Now all the Midianites, Amalekites, and other eastern peoples joined forces and crossed over the Jordan and camped in the valley of Je- Jezreel. Then the spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon, and he blew a trumpet, summoning the Abiezrites to follow him. He sent messengers throughout Manasseh, calling them to arms, and also into Asher, Zebulun, and Naphtali, so that they too went up to meet them. Gideon said to God, If you will save Israel by my hand as you have promised, look, I will place a wool fleece on the threshing floor. Is there, If there is dew only on the fleece and all of the ground is dry, then I know that you will save Israel by my hand, you as you said. And that is what happened. Gideon rose early the next day. He squeezed the fleece and wrung out the dew, a bowl full of water. Then Gideon said to God, do not be angry with me. Let me just make one more request. Allow me one more test with the fleece. This time make the fleece dry and the ground covered with dew. That night God did so. Only the fleece was dry. All the ground was covered with dew. Chapter 7. Early in the morning, Jeroboam, that is Gideon, and all his men camped at the spring of Herod. The camp of Midian was north of them in the valley near the hill of Morah. The Lord said to Gideon, you have too many men for me to deliver Midian into your hands. In order that Israel may not boast against me that her own strength has saved her, announce now to the people, anyone... Who trembles with fear may turn back and leave Mount Gilead. So 22,000 men left. While 10,000 remained. But the Lord said to Gideon, there are still too many men. Take them down to the water and I will sift them for you there. If I say this one shall go with you, he shall go. But if I say this one shall not go with you, he shall not go. So Gideon took the men down to the water. There the Lord told him, separate those who lap the water with their tongues like a dog from those who kneel down to drink. (coughs) Excuse me. 300 men lapped with their hands to their mouths. All the rest got down on their knees to drink. The Lord said to Gideon, with the 300 men that lapped, I will save you and give the Midianites into your hands. Let all the other men go, each to his own place. So Gideon sent the rest of the Israelites to their tents, but kept the 300 who took over the provisions and trumpets of the others. Now, The camp of Midian lay below him in the valley. During that night, the Lord said to Gideon, Get up, go down against the camp, because I am going to give it into your hands. If you are afraid to attack, 
go down to the camp with your servant Pura and listen to what they are saying. Afterward, <clears throat> you will be encouraged to attack the camp. So he and Pura, his servant, went down to the outposts of the camp. The Midianites, the Amalekites, and all other eastern peoples had settled in the valley, thick as locusts. Their camels could no more be counted than the sand on the seashore. Gideon arrived just as a man was telling a friend his dream. I had a dream, he was saying. A round loaf of barley bread came trumbling, tumbling into the Midianite camp. It struck the tent with such force that the tent overturned and collapsed. His friend responded, this can be nothing other than the sword of Gideon, son of Joash, the Israelite. God has given the Midianites and the whole camp into his hands. When Gideon heard the dream and its interpretation, he worshipped God. He returned to the camp of Israel and called out, Get up! The Lord has given the Midianite camp into, our hand, into your hands. Dividing the 300 men into three companies, he placed trumpets and empty jars in the hands of all of them with torches inside. Watch me, he told them. Follow my lead. When I get to the edge of the camp, do exactly as I do. When I and all who are with me blow our trumpets, then from all around the camp blow yours and shout for the Lord and for Gideon. Gideon and the hundred men with him reach the edge of the camp at the beginning of the middle watch. Just after they changed the guard, they blew their trumpets and broke the jars that were in their hands. The three companies blew the trumpets and smashed the jars, grasping the torches in their left hands and holding in their hands the trumpets they were to blow. They shouted, a sword for the Lord and for Gideon. While each man held his position around the camp, all the Midianites ran, crying out as they fled. When the 300 trumpets sounded the Lord sounded the Lord caused the men throughout the camp to turn on each other with their swords the army fled to Beth Sheeta toward Zerura as far as the border of Abel Mahala near Tabith Israelites from Naphtali Asher and all Manasseh were called out and they pursued the Midianites Gideon sent messengers throughout the hill country of Ephraim, saying, Come down against the Midianites and seize the waters of the Jordan ahead of them as far as Beth Barah. So all the men of Ephraim were called out, and they took the waters of the Jordan as far as Beth Barah. Barah. They also captured two of the Midianite leaders, Oreb and Zeb. They killed Oreb at the rock of Oreb and Zeb at the winepress of Zeb. They pursued the Midianites and brought the heads of Oreb and Zeb to Gideon, who was by the Jordan. Amen. Okay. Luke 18, 18 through 43. Luke 18, 18 through 43, which concludes chapter 18. A certain ruler asked him, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not give false testimony. Honor your father and mother. All these I have kept since I was a boy, he said. When Jesus heard this, he said to him, you still lack one thing. Sell everything you have and give it to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. When he heard this, he became very sad because he was a man of great wealth. Jesus looked at him and said, how hard 
it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. Indeed, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Those who heard this asked, who then can be saved? Jesus replied, what is impossible with men is possible with God. Peter said to him, we have left all we had to follow you. I tell you the truth, Jesus said to them, no one who has left home or wife or brothers or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God will fail to receive many times as much in this age and in the age to come eternal life. Verse 31 Jesus took the 12 aside and told them, We are going up to Jerusalem, and everything that is written by the prophets about the Son of Man will be fulfilled. He will be handed over to the Gentiles. They will mock him, insult him, spit on him, flog him, and kill him. On the third day, he will rise again. The disciples did not understand any of this. Its meaning was hidden from them, and they did not know what, was, what he was talking about. As Jesus approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard the crowd going by, he asked what was happening. They told him Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth is passing by. He called out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Those who led the way rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and ordered the man to be brought to him. When he came near, Jesus asked him, What do you want me to do for you? Lord, I want to see, he replied. Jesus said to him, Receive your sight. Your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus, praising God. When all the people saw it, they also praised God. Amen. Psalm 74, 4 through 11. Psalm 74, 4 through 11. Your foes roared in the place where you met with us. They set up their standards as signs. They have they behaved like men wielding axes to cut through a thicket of trees. They smashed all the curved paneling with their axes and hatchets. They burned your sanctuary to the ground. They defiled the dwelling place of your name. They said in their hearts, we will crush them completely. They burned every place where God was worshipped in the land. We are given no miraculous signs, no prophets are left, and none of us knows how long this will be. How long will the enemy mock you, O God? Will the foe revile your name forever? Why do you hold back your hand, your right hand? Take it from the folds of your garment and destroy them. Amen. Revelation 15. I saw in heaven another great and marvelous sign, seven angels with seven last plagues, last because with them God's wrath is completed. And I saw what looked like a sea of glass mixed with fire and standing beside the sea. Those who had been given been victorious over the beast and his images, image and over the number of his name. They held harps given them by God and sang the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb. Great and marvelous are your deeds, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, King of the ages, who will not fear you, O Lord, and bring glory to your name. For you alone are holy. All nations will come and worship before you. For your righteous acts have been revealed. After this, I looked and in heaven, the temple that is the tabernacle of the testimony was opened. Out of the temple came the seven angels with the seven plagues. They were dressed in clean, shining linen and wore golden sashes around their chests. Then one of the four living creatures gave 
to the seven angels, seven golden bowls filled with the wrath of God, whose lives forever, who lives forever and ever. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power. And no one could enter the temple until the seven plagues of the seven angels were completed. Amen. My notes on chapter 15. The seven last plagues are also called the seven bold judgments. They actually begin in chapter 16, unlike the previous plagues. These are universal and they will culminate in the abolish, abolition, abolition, abolition of all evil. With them, God's wrath is completed and the end of the world. This is similar to the sea of glass described in 4.6, located before the throne of God. Here it is mixed with fire to represent wrath and judgment. Those who stand beside it are victorious over Satan and his evil beast. The song of Moses celebrated Israel's deliverance from Egypt. Exodus 15. The song of the Lamb celebrates, <clears throat> excuse me, the ultimate deliverance of God's people from the power of Satan. The Tabernacle of Testimony is a Greek translation for the Hebrew Tent of Meeting. See Exodus 40, 34, and 35. The imagery brings us back to the time of the Exodus in the desert when the Ark of the Covenant, the symbol of God's presence among his people, resided in the tabernacle. The angels coming out of the temple area clothed in clean, shining linen with golden sashes around their chests. Their garments, reminiscent of the high priest's clothing, show that they are free from corruption, immorality, and injustice. The smoke that fills the temple is the manifestation of God's glory and power. There is no escape from his judgment. A return our eternal reign with with Christ won't begin until all evil is destroyed by his judgment. The faithful must wait for his timetable to be revealed. Amen. That's my notes for chapter 15. Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you make the most high your dwelling, even the Lord who is my refuge, then no harm will befall you. No disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you for joining me today, April 28th, 2022. I hope that you have a blessed day and have many opportunities to be a blessing to other people. Thank you and I will see you tomorrow.